Hello, welcome to my channel in mechanical engineering concept. Today I am going to discuss about one of the types of rigid coupling which is known as a rigid flange coupling. It is a basic type of a coupling which is used to connect input and output shaft to transmit power. So as we know that as the name suggested that this is the rigid type of a coupling which is used to connect two input and output shaft. So first here I am going to discuss in this lecture what is the flange coupling, rigid flange coupling and its design procedure. So a flange coupling consists of two flanges. One end is for one is for driven shaft and one is for driving shaft. One keyed to the driving shaft and other to driven shaft. Mainly these flanges are used to connect input and output shaft with the help of bolts. Basically 4 to 6 number of bolts are used to connect the flanges. This is the basic diagram of a front and side view of the flange coupling. Here in right hand side there is a driving shaft and in left hand uh, sorry in the left hand side there is a driving shaft and in the right hand side we have a driven shaft. One key way is there shown in this figure. In left hand side two flange one flange is there and right hand side one flange is another flange is there to for driven shaft. Uh, Spoiled races are used to connect to two of them and separate the input outflow to who do not connect to each other and one protected circumference ring are used uh, with the with the base on the basis of this uh, protected circumferential rim we can divide this rigid plane coupling into two parts one is unprotected circumferential rim type of rigid flange coupling and another one is protected circumferential rim type protect, uh, flange, rigid flange coupling so on the basis of circumferential rim we can divide this two part one is and repeating again one is protected type and another one is unprotected type protect means this red zone this red border is used to uh, protect the circumference uh, on the circumference of the flange to protect the damage this flange in the right hand side we can say that in a this is the a view of a left side view of a flange coupling in which bolted are used to connect here in showing that bolts are used to connect the flanges here i am using different notation to design a flange coupling the small d the diameter of the shaft dh is the outer dia of the hub L H is the length of hub, D is the pitch circle dia of bolt, T is the flange thickness, T1 is the thickness of rim, DR is the dia of spoilgot and capital D outer is the capital D O is outer dia of flanges. How to design flange coupling? This is the main question arises. So to design a flange coupling, I am going to suggest a design procedure of a flange coupling. So to design a flange coupling first we need to in first step we need to design a shaft. So to design a shaft we need a torque value which is produced with the help of power and speed. So first we need to calculate the torque value with this equation 60 into 10 to the power 6 power value into the kilowatt divided by 2 pi n. From this torque torsion equation a torque equation we can calculate the torque in Newton meter sorry Newton mm because 1 10 to the power 3 is multiplied for a kilowatt to watt conversion and another 10 to the power 3 value is used to convert the mm meter value Newton meter value into the Newton mm value. This torque value is used to calculate the value of dia of the shaft which is small d. This equation is derived from the torsional equation T upon J tau by R. So uh, in that equation, tors torsion equation T or MT is the torque transmitted. J is the polar momentum of inertia which is pi by 32 into D to power 4 
for solid shaft and for hollow shaft pi by 32 into d outer diameter to power 4 minus d inner diameter to power 4. So here I am using uh, solid shaft so due to that our moment of inertia equation will be pi by 32 into d to power 4 small d to power 4. Tau is the shear stress permissible shear stress r is the diameter value divided by 2 which is the distance from center of the axis of shaft to upper or lower fiber distance or a surface uh, surface distance in which the stress will induce or stress will occur. So if with this equation tau is equal to 16 mt by pi d cube which is simplified on the basis of putting the all the terms polar moment of inertia in the small r value we can simplify tau is equal to 16 mt by pi d cube. Here mt value we can calculate with the help of power and speed which will be given into the problem tau will be calculated with the help of permissible stress equation with respect to SSY divided by FOS where SSY will be the uh, yield shear strength which can be calculated on the maximum shear stress theory uh, which is equal to 0.5 times of SYT divided by FOS equal to tau. So from that tau can be calculated and putting all the tau empty we can calculate small d value in mm. After calculating small d, we can calculate the dimension of flanges. The dimension of flanges, there is a different notation I am already told you which I am considering here to design a flange coupling. dh is the half dia, lh is the length of a capital D is equal to piss circle dia, t is the flange thickness, small t is the flange thickness, t1 is the thickness of rim which is used to protect the flanges. Dr is the dia of spoigot or dia of races. D outer is the outer dia of the flanges. This is the outer dia. Okay. So for that we considering here empirical relation on the basis of sharp dia. This all the dimension can be calculated on the basis of sharp dia. So first, first main thing I am uh, I wanted to tell you. Uh, this on the uh, on this uh, empirical relation is that this empirical relation is basically based on the practical values. So this suppose d h is equal to two d. How this equation will come out? So this equation is come out on the basis of practical values which are used to design of flanges. Because we we can't calculate all the values on the basis of failure only because we have a limitation of failure and we, we need to design a component on the basis of simplicity because suppose I am considering a failure for each component for each dimension so our design procedure will be more complicated more complicated so to simplify our design procedure we basically considering this basic empirical relation this basic empirical relation can be vary on the basis of very few values suppose dh value can be 2.1 times of d. So 0.1 value will be considerable, considerably can be neglected. So to des for design simplification and for numerical calculation simplification, we can consider this relation. d h is equal to 2 times of diameter of shaft, l h is will be 1.5 times of diameter of the shaft, capital D will be 3.3 uh, 3 into uh, diameter of the shaft, small t will be 0.5 times of the diameter of the shaft, t1 will be the 0.25 times of the diameter of the shaft, dr will be the 1.5 times of the diameter of the shaft and d outer which is the outer dia of the flanges is the 4 times of diameter of the shaft plus 2 times of t1. In this, this first 4 terms are very important because to design the flanges, these are the main elements which we, uh, we, we can um, check further to whether this value empirical relation is empirical relation value is uh, safe enough to bear the permissible uh, sorry safe enough to bear the induced value on the basis of applied torque so you need to remember this equation and you can find this relation into the design data book pv bhandari in a flange coupling chapter so after designing the flanges we can we can proceed to check whether this uh, hub which is which i am designing in this flanges 
dh and lh is safe enough to bear the torque or not so calculating the check, uh, calculate or check the torsion shear stress for hub which is used to design a flanges so here in previous step i am already calculated the value of dh and lh which is the dimension of a hub h is used to uh, denote the hub of the uh, hub dimension so as we know that uh, torsional equation t upon mt by j tau by r where mt is a torque transmitted uh, in the component r will be the distance from axis to surface in which the shear stress will induced tau will be the shear stress which is produced due to torsion and j is the polar moment of inertia here hub is the hollow circular section in which outer dia is dh or inner dia is d in which d is the shaft dia which is used to put or inserted into the hub dia and outer dia will be dh which is used to protect and connect with the flanges so here we have a section of hollow so hollow hollow section hollow shaft section or hollow hub section so due to that polar moment of inertia can be considered as a pi by 32 into d to power 4 dh to power 4 minus d to power 4 and r will be dh outer dia upper surface or we can say the surface in which shear stress will be induced is outer dia dh by 2 putting all this value and torque can be calculated on the basis of shear force into dh by 2 if you didn't know the torque value then we can calculate from shear stress into dh by 2 putting the shear force value because here the shear force will be force into area area will be resisting area pi into dh circumference into thickness of hub thickness of hub will be t circumference will be dia of hub into pi area will be pi dh into t and stress induced in the due to shear force will be tau shear stress putting the shear force value into dh by 2 force into perpendicular distance dh by 2 we can calculate mt is equal to 1 by 2 pi dh square into t into tau from this equation we can calculate or we can check whether our component is safe enough to bear the load or whether our component is our component and use stress value is less than the permissible value which is given to us in the problem or we can consider it with the help of given material consideration we can uh, we can solve this problem after the, after considering this design procedure in upcoming lectures i am uh, giving you the basic uh, numerical problem or case study problem for design procedure on the design procedure of flange coupling so oh, first uh, we need to understand what is the basic procedure to design a flange coupling so here i am considering here so in a step 4 which is step d here after checking the hub dimension we can calculate the dia of the bolt because here two flanges are you flanges are connected on the basis of uh, on the basis of uh, bolt uh, because if the bolt is not enough cross section to bear the load of torque then the bolt will fail and the flange coupling will disconnect with each other and the shaft will cannot transmit the power or torque from one shaft to another shaft so the tightening and the cross section area of the bolt is very important so we need to calculate the dia of the bolt so to calculate the dia of the bolt first we need to know the whether the dimension of the uh, uh, what is the what is the dimension of the shaft so if the diameter of the shaft is less than 40 mm then we can calc we can take three number of bolts if we have the dia of the bolt is in between 100 to 180 we can take six number of bolts and suppose if we have dia of the no, sorry if we have dia of the shaft is 100 to 180 then number of bolt is 6 if we have dia of the shaft is in between more than 40 and less than 100 so we can consider number of bolt as 4 not 40 only 4 sorry by mistake i am written here written here 0 only 4 is there so on the basis of that we can decide it we can decide whether 
what what is the number what uh, what number of uh, volt we can use to design a flange coupling or to support the flanges or to tighten the flanges so after the selection of the number of volts we can calculate what is the load and what is the diameter so external torque can be written as torque is a force into distance force is p distance is d by 2 and n is the number of volt because in flanges bolt will apply the force due to which the torque will produced in the flanges so number of bolt is used to connect the flanges and hold the one flange to the another flange so n is multiplied due to that force into distance into number of bolt so to calculate the dia of the bolt bolt dia is circular section so we can consider d1 is the dia of the bolt so bolt can be filled due to shear stress because uh, in the component of flange coupling shear uh, torsional stress will be induced which is shear stress so component can fail a uh, bolt component can fail due to shear stress tau is equal to load upon area area will be pi by 4 d square because bolt dia is circular section or d1 is the dia of the bolt pi by 4 d1 square here i am considering for design simplification dia of bolt is uniform no thread is there if we consider thread then nominal dia is used nominal dia is here i am considering d1 so tau can be calculated from here <coughs> comparing equation a torque equation and shear stress tau in this both equation p is common so putting p value from one equation to another we can compare after comparing we can calculate tau is equal to 8 mt by pi d and d1 square again i am repeating torque equation due to number of bolt p into d by 2 into n is i am considering equation a equation a value of p is putting from p is equal to 2 mt by dn into this equation stress is equal to load upon area replacing this p with respect to this p value 2 mt by d capital d into n after putting this value we can calculate this equation and come out as a tau is equal to 8 mt by pi d n into d1 square so we need to calculate d1 we already know capital n speed torque tau permissible stress and d capital d here is pitch circle dia of the bolt we know that so putting all the values we can calculate d1 is equal to square root of 8 mt by pi d n into tau from consider this as a equation number c from equation c we can calculate d1 dia of the bolt so on the basis of that we can calculate dia of bolt after calculating dia of the bolt we can check whether this bolt dia is safe enough to bear the torque or not so torque equal to pc uh, compressive force because uh, if we use to connect uh, bolt to flange uh, we if we use bolt for connecting the flanges so bolt is tightening from one end to another with the help of nut bolt arrangement so bolt is tightening due to tightening of bolt we consider that bolt will also have a compressive stress due to compressive force because due to tightening effect the bolt will induce in bolt we induced a compressive stress or compressive force due to compressive force uh, stress will induce compressive stress pi by 4 sorry uh, sigma c into area is equal to pc area will be resisting area d1 into t consider a rectangular section of bolt t is the thickness d1 is the dia of the bolt which is circular section so d1 into t will be the area pc is equal to b, sigma c into d1 putting pc value into this torque value we can conclude conclude that sig mt is equal to n sigma c t1 t into d by 2 we know d pitch circle dia of the bolt d1 we already calculated 
P is known to us with respect to the empirical relation. N is the speed. So N is the number of volt. Mt is the torque produced, which we calculated on the basis of power and speed. We can calculate sigma c. Sigma c is equation number D. From this equation, we can calculate sigma c and compare with the given value of permissible value. If the permissible value is more than the induced value, this induced value sigma c, then our component will safe enough to bear the torque. If our induced value, which is come out from this equation number D, more than the permissible value which is given to us in the problem, then our component will not safe enough to bear the load. Then we need to check, we need to further design our component. Equation D is used to check compressive stresses. After checking compressive stresses, we can go for design the key which is used to connect shaft to the hub. So length of key is length of hub because two hubs are used for one flange from the right hand side and one flange from the left hand side. Each flanges have one hub. So for each hub, we need one key way and one key for each shaft and hub. So length of key will be equal to approximately length of hub. So length of key can be equal to length of hub. Length of hub we will already know from empirical relation three times of die of uh, shaft. So length of key will be L is equal to LH. In the rigid flange coupling and or we can say that in a coupling of rigid type, we can main, we mainly use key is flat or rectangular type, not a square type. But suppose in a problem or case study problem, if a numerical uh, problem, uh, we have a square type key design procedure, then we can calculate D, or B or H. As we know that for a square key, width and height is equal. So one fourth times of dia on the basis of that we can calculate height and width because in a square key height and width are same. For flat key width is more than the height value on the basis of requirement. So if we wanted to calculate width and height so we can use empirical relation like uh, uh, for width uh, one fourth times of dia of the shaft and uh, height will be h will be uh, one sixth times of the dia of the shaft. This value can also be calculated with the help of design data book Vivi Bhandari in which there is a table given to us in which dia of the shaft is already given to us. On the basis of dia of the shaft we can calculate, we can uh, take uh, the height and width value for a tangular square key. Suppose uh, we have a dia of the shaft is 30 mm. So in that table, in Vivi Bhandari design procedure of key, design of key chapter, uh, design the book of Vivi Bhandari, uh, design of key chapter. Uh, table is given to us in which dia of the shaft is in first column. In, in that uh, table, uh, further column are there for height, width and length. So 30 mm will be given to us if suppose, then approximately 1 6 and 1 4 times of value of the dia basis, the basis of dia we can uh, we have a table value uh, of uh, height and width. So from that on also we can consider our uh, value uh, that are also on the basis of practical data which will be approximately uh, correct. So we can take and after considering the value of height, width and length of key, we can check whether our component is safe enough to bear the load. Our component is key type. So key uh, for key, checking the key uh, design safety value, we can use the value of tau is equal to 2 mt bdl, which I already derived in a design procedure of key. You can watch that video and go through that video. Then after if you have any doubt, then go through that video and uh, ask me. Uh, this equation is come out from there. 2 mt by BDL and sigma is equal to 4 mt by THL. So putting mt BDL 4 mt B, uh, DHL, we can check sigma C and tau which should be less than the permissible given value. Suppose if it is less than 
in our design we say if suppose this sigma c and tau will be more than the permissible given value then our design will not safe so for safe design we need to increase the dimension of the key for uh, bearing the component value or uh, bear a component uh, torque value to resist the failure on the basis of equation e we can check sigma c tau so this is the basic design procedure of uh, french coupling if you have any doubt then please ask me and go through the previous video also because uh, in this coupling design a coupling we need to have a basic concept related to key designing and uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel and if you have uh, if you like my video then please press the like button and if you have any query any comment any suggestion then don't forget to comment below this video or any video in this my channel thank you